Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa, and tonight we are going to do a little late night watering vlog. It's quiet, it's relaxing, and I just felt like doing some watering later this evening for some reason. I do have to water a good majority of the plants in here, but anything that I don't get finished tonight, I'll just water tomorrow. It's not urgent that I have to get through everyone this evening, but I figured I would just film since I have to water anyway, and I will just take you through some of that with me. I did ask my Instagram, if you don't follow me over there, it's Plants by Melissa. And I asked if there were any updates or any plans that they wanted me to show in this video tonight. And I wrote down a lot of questions. Sorry if you can see the ring light in my glasses. It's really late, so it's kind of dark in my plant room and my camera doesn't pick up that well if it's not bright. So I have a ring light on it and we'll try and you know, move it around throughout this video. So we're gonna start behind me, cheers, and I hope you enjoy this little late night vlog. Before we get started with the Monsteras, I actually wanna show you this bloom on my Hoya. It just opened up last night. I tried to record a time lapse, but it didn't really work that well. I think the focus and angle was off, but that is okay. So I did recently repot this one, and so this is a Hoya Apuvada Splash. You can see a little bit of the splash on the leaves. And since the repot, it's done really well and you can see all the blooms have opened. They are really vibrant pink. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell just because of the light tonight. I'll put a picture on the screen here. I took it last night in bright light and I couldn't really smell much of a scent from the blooms, but they do kind of smell a little floral, but it's not overpowering. I don't know if you can see, aren't they beautiful? So this um, Hoya has not bloomed for me, and I have it in the window over here getting really bright light. But since it bloomed, I'm so worried about getting ants again, and I'm worried that the blooms will have sap. So I'm gonna leave it here on the table until the blooms fall, and then I will stick it back in my window. I just don't wanna risk having ants again. And you can see there's a couple new leaves coming in. Look at how cute, we got one there. And there's also one here. So yes, very excited about that little bloom. It's so stinking cute. And I got this pot recently, actually. This is from Lowe's. It's like a baby blue trim and it fits my five inch white nursery pots perfectly. So I actually might go get a few more of them. They were $9.99, so $10. So it's a little expensive. It is a heavy ceramic but it just fits the pots like literally perfectly. So I actually might, I don't think this Hoya is thirsty. Oh, it might be a little thirsty actually. I don't think I watered it since that video. Yeah, it's actually pretty dry. So I will go ahead and water this Hoya. It's probably been close to two weeks since I repotted this and it's, yeah, the soil is completely dry. That's another reason why I love my mix, because I know when it dries out. And the bottom leaves are a little bit soft. It could probably wait a few more days, but since it does have a bloom, I'm going to go ahead and water. I took my Aria down and she's doing okay. She definitely is a little droopy, which I feel like it's probably because she's wanting some water now. I didn't want to overdo it after the repot, but the bottom leaves are extremely droopy and some of the other ones are kind of drooping. 
So you guys know I repotted her into my mix and cut off all the rot. The soil does feel dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her a thorough water. I feel like it's been enough time to water the plant. Yeah, she's definitely thirsty. It's hard, really hard to tell, but she is working on a new leaf up here. I bet you after I give her a thorough water, she'll probably pop this out in a week, um, pretty soon actually. I probably could have watered her several days ago, but again, I just wanted to let the roots kind of breathe and get oxygen since they were just so heavily <laughs> like dense in that mix. She's definitely gonna do great and just fine. She'll recover, no problem. I might end up losing, you know, the bottom leaves, but it's okay. They'll, they'll go eventually because they were the original propagated leaves, so I'm not expecting them to hang on forever, you know. All right, I'm gonna lift her up and plop her down in here. So I have not watered her since the video, like I said, so she's really going to appreciate a thorough soak. I love to let the soil go mostly dry and then I do a heavy water. That's how I water my anthuriums. That's how I water my alocasia, monsteras. I just know my mix so well. Yeah, this soil was de definitely dry. And when I'm watering, I'm usually inspecting leaves. I don't do it, I get in the habit of doing it pretty much all the time. You know, if I'm doing my midweek watering, I don't tend to check again. It depends on how much time I have and my mood for the day. But again, most of the time I just I've just gotten into a habit of checking for plant pests. That way, anything that arises, I can just treat and quarantine. That way, it, it doesn't get out of hand. It's just, I've always been that way. I feel like once you've dealt with pests <laughs> for so long, it's just like, you never want a bad infestation to happen again. And I don't clean the leaves every time. For Monstera specifically, it's mostly thrips and spider mites. But I would say mostly thrips, which I didn't get thrips until I think midsummer in here, so I'm not expecting them to show up yet. But I'm gonna be ordering more beneficials here soon, and I'm gonna be pretty consistent, I think, ordering them every month. And I'm also gonna get more um, nematodes and water them in as well. I'm not really loving the steak though. I might get something that has two prongs for a little better support at the base because this one is pretty wobbly and I'm not really liking this to support this Monstera. I always get asked how come I don't use poles with my Monsteras and I did have poles and I removed them because I mean the only thing that it's really doing is providing support. The aerial roots all these roots grow straight through a pole and out the other end. So I just find it kind of useless. Honestly, I'd rather just use a stake. Yeah, she's barely draining anything. So that soil took up all of that water. So yeah, these leaves will be perked up hopefully by sometime tomorrow. And I will get her back on my watering schedule, which is when it's like 80 plus in here, degrees. I'm watering sometimes twice a week, but usually once a week for a majority of my plants. Um, you know, except for like, I feel like summertime when it's super warm, like pretty consistently every day in here is when I'm watering twice a week. But I would say mostly once a week, depending on the plant and if it's root bound and there's so many circumstances that go into it. So yes, that is the update on her. I have great news with my Monstera Thai constellations. That was another plant that someone wanted to see an update on. I have two Monstera Thais. I have this one. This one was gifted to me. Again, the leaves are curling in because this plant is very thirsty. I wanted to give my Monsteras a little time to breathe before I went and water them again just because they were so heavily saturated. 
so it is definitely time for a water. But I have great news. I have new root growth. You can see, where did it go? Right here. There's some healthy root. And this is my OG Thai Con, my baby that I grew from a node. This is my pride and joy. And it is working on a new leaf here. You can see it is somewhat damaged brown from the rot, you know, just from the shock. But overall, I mean, it's doing, it's doing well for having root rot. And again, the soil is definitely dry. I need to thoroughly soak it. But there is a healthy root right there growing. I used clear pots specifically for monitoring the roots. And you know, I, I'm sort of mad at myself because I didn't catch it early enough. I just feel like I just trusted in a mix that I thought was drying out within like four or five days. And it just, it didn't dawn on me until I was repotting my monsteras that I never saw any healthy roots in the clear pots. It, I didn't even think about it. I just assumed they were like growing well and the roots were doing okay. But the reason I didn't see any healthy roots is because they were all brown and rotting. So I'm mad at myself, you know, cause I feel like I should have caught this sooner and I should have known but it's okay, you know, lesson learned. I will, like I was saying, I will never try another substrate on any of my favorite plants ever again. I mean, the roots were suffocating. There was literally no airflow. That's why they were rotting. I'm just really happy that they're all in my mix and I know they're all gonna do well and recover just fine. I have so many plants still in that substrate. I have some poles. I have some, a lot of my anthurium actually thinking back. I repotted several of my anthuriums in that mix and I water them very heavily. And now that, now that I'm thinking back, I'm wondering if that's why some of them aren't happy. And, and it was because of like the lack of airflow in the substrate. So yes, I think I will be repotting some of my anthuriums this week because they desperately, desperately need a repot. my three new plants here. This is the alocasia. It's given me a new leaf in the middle. It is so pretty. I wonder if you can make, make out how cute that new leaf is. And it's killing off these two leaves. One was kind of yellowing, you know, from the get-go. And they're just the older leaves. And it's probably due to like, you know, environmental stress shipping, all of that. So since they are pretty much on their way out, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those. I'm not liking how compacted the little plug is. And I feel like the soil has dried on this one like pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this one in. The 
Other alocasia, the Mickey Mouse. You guys told me this one was a spider mite magnet. So that's, that's nice. And it lost the little baby leaf that it had, but it does, um, I feel like it will give me a new one soon. I think so. But I'm gonna go ahead and water that one, as well as the ficus. The ficus, I left the plug, but I, I feel like the soil around the base has dried. The ficus I have sitting in my window so this one's getting really high light and it does have a new leaf that it's working on right there. And I feel like all three of these need a good drink. So, I mean, that leaf is crisping a little bit. I'm happy I have these, but in all honesty, I kind of wish I had just splurged and got a little bit of a bigger plant just because they are so tiny and I feel like if you miss a watering or you know if you're like inconsistent one time they're going to just stress and then they'll just die you know I don't know like that's what I worry about anyway I just have to keep in mind that their soil is probably going to dry very quickly and you know I just have to be mindful to just keep an eye on these guys. So I would say overall they have adjusted well and you know I still I still really like them you know again I just wish they I just wish they were a little bit bigger. Next up are my alocasias. They're usually the plants that have to be watered once or twice a week. And I have all of my alocasias on this shelf to check and water. And I have a feeling all of my corms that are in Fluval just need to be topped off and that doesn't take very long at all. So I'll go ahead and do that too. And let's see, for my alocasias, I would say the one that's probably seems to not be doing as well as it did was the heterophylla and I'll show you guys that one. This is one that I did on my Instagram. This is my silver dragon here. I repotted it and added a corman that I was growing in my cabinet and it's working on a new leaf here in the middle. That leaf is huge and gorgeous. Oh, all right, my other grow light just went out. So yes, we are only left with my ceiling fan light and the ring light. So hopefully you guys can still see okay. This is my new one. Just ignore my huge Capri leaf. This, I think this alocasia, I think I'm going to secure the vines, so it's really long, the petiole, like the stem, 
and I have a like an acrylic stake but it's just I keep banging into it because it sticks out so far from my shelf I'm thinking about like doing a quick little like tie up of some of the stems so that it's a little bit more close together it's just like fanned out in all directions it's so wide it really has outgrown that spot down here I don't really have anywhere else to put this alocasia right now so yeah it definitely needs a bigger home so yeah it's definitely thirsty though it is working on a new leaf you can see oh it hasn't unfurled all the way yet it has done three flower blooms in a row so <laughs> I am long overdue for a leaf on that one. I'm going to go ahead and water since I'm thinking about it. All of my alocasias have always been in my mix and they love it. I haven't steered from my mix for my alocasias. This is the new one, the Sinuata that I got from the big box store. And it gave me a bloom, that new growth, so I cut it off and it is working on another new leaf in here. And so this leaf was damaged from the store and this yellowing was already there. So I don't think there's anything fungal going on. I'm keeping an eye on it. So far, the leaves look okay. I just always get so anxious with alocasia now. So this one was a repot on my Insta and I added actually two corms. One of the leaves aren't making it here. A kitty cat decided to join me. Chai's down here. They've been snoozing. So cutting off that little crispy baby leaf. And these alocasia corms were in fluval stratum, so they've acclimated really well to soil. These are my next round of alocasias to water. My silver dragon is just exploding. <laughs> it's so much growth. I have my Maharani here. I don't know if you can see it that well. I have my Amazonica here. And this is the one that's been a little sad. It's the Heterophylla. It's lost several leaves now and this other original one seems to be looking a little angry and sus i did find spider mites on this plant recently and i treated it these three leaves here are new the smaller ones and it has a ton of new growth coming in but this leaf definitely there's something going on with it. I'm tempted to just cut it off. So, you know, I haven't cared for this alocasia, so I don't know what it likes and its preferences, but by the way that it's leaning like this, I mean, it's not overly thirsty. I still feel a little moisture in here. So the stems feel firm. But the way that they're turning makes me think that it doesn't like the intense light that it's getting under the barina light. Because it is, I would say, within like six inches or so. Because the way that the leaves are pointing down tells me they're facing away from it instead of facing out and up. So I think I'm going to move this one and see how it responds. I have so many baby corms that have sprouted from this plant. I did that on 214. I transferred a lot of them into their own separate cups of fluval stratum 
And once they establish a bit more, I do want to pot some back into here to fill this plant out because this leaf is going to go for sure. And I feel like this leaf isn't as happy either. I'm wondering if there is like a fungal infection going on with this plant too. Because remember when I first bought this, I was concerned with some leaves and I did treat it with the fungicide. I think for tonight, I think I'm just gonna leave it on this table here in the middle of my room until I can find a spot for it. I'll probably treat it with the fungicide at some point and see how it responds. It just definitely, just something tells me that it's not liking its spot. My poly has been a little finicky lately, which I'm thinking it could have something fungal going on. Cause some of the leaves look a little sus. There's like some yellowing spots you can see, which I don't know if I let it get too dry one time. So I don't know. I like pulling all these crispy bits off. It doesn't need to be repotted. It gave me a new leaf recently that's happy. I don't know, you can kind of tell, like when you hold the alocasia up to the light, this leaf back here, I don't think you're gonna be able to see. When you, when you shine it into light, if you look on the backside, you can see spots that look fungal-ish to me. Which it was sitting next to, it does sit next to this one. So they could have gotten a little fungal infection together because this one initially had some concerning leaves. So again, I might leave, I might spray these tomorrow during the daylight. I don't like to clean leaves too much at night because they really need to dry to prevent a fungal spread, especially alocasias. My plants are getting so crammed together because they're growing so much that a lot of the leaves touch each other. So I just don't want to increase the chance of anything spreading tonight. So I'll just water them and leave these two probably on this table. I'm just running out of space in here. My plants are just getting so big. It does stress me out a little because <laughs> I'm thinking like, where are they all gonna go? I do want to redo the guest bedroom though and get like a larger plant shelf and redo it and have like some more plants in there. I put that one shelf in there temporarily just to hold some props to get them out of here. But again, like, Plants are getting too big. Maybe I should stop feeding them so much. <laughs> like slow down, maybe just slow down a little bit. I wanted to show you these three beauties. I have these three left on this entire shelf and that'll be it. And I'm not gonna water my Gloriosum. I feel like it's hasn't quite dried out enough. So I'm gonna hold off on that one. There comes Loon Loon. Hi, Loon Loon. Yeah. Hi, cutie. Hi. Yeah. It's so weird because they're not in here anymore unless I'm in here. I feel like they don't really know how to act not being in my playroom. That's the gate I keep across my door now. I leave like this door open for airflow, but I just like block them off from coming in here. I repotted all these actually in a video and you guys, this is my favorite Calathea. This is my Makoyana and it is ex literally exploding in growth. This repot, I don't know. It just, I guess desperately like needed it. I have so many new leaves coming in down there and she's blooming. She already had a bloom um, that died off, but I wanted to show you the other blooms coming in. Do you see those green little things there? And the flowers kind of look like a Maranta flower and they'll get a little bit longer and then like push. This one probably has, you can see there's a couple little buds that will form blooms 
So I have two right there for me. This is literally just the happiest Calathea. I just love her so much. The underside is beautiful too. My rattlesnake is growing a little bit slower, so it should be hopefully pushing some new growth soon. I haven't noticed too much growth yet on that one since I repotted. And my trio star is doing amazing. I feel like it's definitely appreciated the upsize. Again, I have lots of new growth coming in on this one. Such a gorgeous plant. Like, look at that color, you guys. Seriously, so beautiful. So I'm gonna give these a good water in. I'll probably chuck and water my Regal Shields. I think it needs a water and my fry deck. And then I think I'm gonna hold off on doing any moss pole stuff tonight. I watered them Friday and the moss isn't like too dry yet. It's getting there. Like it's not crinkled yet. So I think I might water and wait and water these probably tomorrow. I haven't showed you guys my Sipu Blue finally fenestrated. So the next leaf I'm hoping has at least a couple more. I have been dying for that to fenestrate. Ugh, I love it so much. My Splendid is getting ready to push a huge leaf. Right there, that is gonna be a big leaf. Like this one here is big, but that's gonna be huge. Oh, and I have to show you my Marble Queen, of course, cause she's my favorite. Right here, I measured this leaf and it is almost 13 inches because that was the second um, biggest now and this one here is a little bit bigger oh it has a little good uh, gutation drop i don't know if you can see that do you see it right there there we go <laughs> so yeah her next leaf is going to be huge i can just tell oh, that would be amazing to get a fenestration Literally, like, all of my moss poles are doing so well. My micans is doing well since the repot. You can kind of see, like, I don't have any yellowing. I have new leaves coming in. It is doing, it is doing so well. I extended my Glorious, which you guys will see in a different video. I think you'll probably see that one before this one. My Escaletto is pushing another new leaf. I extended that one, too. So many new leaves, it is crazy. I did have a question on like watering poles and I talked about it like before. Um, you know, I water with the globes. I will saturate the pole all the way through once a week and it'll drip down to the soil. And a lot of the times it'll drip excess water in the ceramic. So I just make sure to empty it out. If it waters all the way through, I'll like check it in the morning, empty the excess water, and sometimes I'll have to check again later that day because more will still drip. Just so that I don't have wet feet, I don't want the pots sitting in water. I don't have all of them in cash pots, some are just in clear pots. You can see, and these guys over here are in clear pots. So I can see the water level. And then when I water a second time, I just make sure to stop it, like, halfway or so. I just don't want the water to drip down in the soil when it's still wet again. So I'll water through a few times, see where, see where the water level is. You don't have to like soak the whole pole like every time. You don't have to try and keep it moist all the time. It's just, it's just impossible to keep up with, especially if you have a large collection. It's just, it's a lot of work. So mine dry out all the time and look at them. They're doing totally fine. It is okay if they go dry. Don't feel like you have to keep them moist 24-7. It is okay. Oops, sorry for the ring light. I do believe a lot of these over here need water. Again, this entire section gets kind of neglected. I feel like this window shelf and my pools are my priority and my cabinet, of course, and then everything else kind of gets put on the back burner. They usually get watered like the following day when I have time. But we'll see how much I get through tonight. Um, I'm gonna finish watering these and then I think I'll show you my cabinet and maybe check that real quick. I'll at least show you the corms. 
And then I might do like a few others and then I'll probably might call it a night, we'll see. These guys are always like water hogs, so I always water them like pretty thoroughly until they start dripping. And you can tell they're thoroughly saturated when <laughs> they're like super heavy. They will use up all this water within like a week easily. But since I upsize them to eight inches, I shouldn't have to water these more than once a week. Um, they are, you know, like in that rant to see a family, so. You know, they do love water. I don't let them sit wet. Like I let their soil, you know, have some airflow. But, um, but yeah, the bigger pot should hold on to water a little bit longer, at least over summer, it's going to appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna take you guys to my cabinet and show you the corms in there and how I water the stratum. It honestly, stratum is so easy. If you're scared to try stratum, don't be scared. I honestly, I was worried at first because I, I had heard things like oh, about molding and oh, it dries out. But as long as you keep it hydrated, it is just so easy. And I just feel like things root so well in it that it's hard to, I feel like it's hard to mess it up in my experience. I don't know, sometimes when I have things in water I tend to like sit and forget about them and the lip of the vessel sometimes is skinnier and they dry out and sometimes I forget about water props but fluval I have it in my head that oh I have to water my fluval at least once a week and if you keep that mindset then you can easily go around and water all your fluval cups I don't know I find it I just like it better the plants do better and they transition better. Water roots are so different. So you can see my bottom row is literally all corms. Before we do the alocasia, I just wanted to show you a couple updates real quick. So you guys know that my Majestic was rotting. So this is my plant that's growing back. Look, my Majestic babies. So this is a brand new leaf. And I also have another little baby one down there. And this was the top cut. So the top cut always grows faster and it has a new leaf here it's working on right there. This is the mid cut. I haven't noticed a new leaf or growth point yet. It is rooting in here. I tend to not disturb them. I let them get like pretty rooted before I'll pop them back up, but I'm gonna do this one on a thickly pole. And this was the bottom cut, and it has like a first new leaf back. Yeah, it'll eventually like grow healthy new roots. And I'm sure there's some in here. Sometimes it's hard to see because of all the algae growth that has formed in this cup. But yes, I was so happy it's growing back. I wish I would've checked it sooner. I, for some reason, I was just thinking it was dormant and that's why it wasn't growing. It was rotting. So if your plants aren't growing, and all the conditions are met, definitely check for root rot. Look at the underside of that too. It's like an El Choco almost. How it has that red backside. So these are still pretty moist, so I'm not gonna worry about watering those. Oh, okay, the other update I wanna give you on is my serpents. I ended up repotting it into my mix, but the roots the roots were not good. As soon as I did that, the plant started drooping like pretty severely. And so I chopped it up pretty much right away. I took a top cut, which is this here, and the bottom cut is, is like right there. So, it has firmed up nicely. This is the leaf that was pushing out, so I don't feel like this new leaf is going to 
like survive or make it but it has firmed up so well and it's hard to see if it's rooted yet like new roots in here but I can just tell by the way that it that it's behaving and the way that it's looking that it's going to do just fine so I'll have a top cut that will continue to grow and then this I'll have a mid cut so basically I just chopped it in half and I just have to reroot the whole thing, but it'll do fine, it'll make it. I tend to use moss when I'm dealing with root rot to reroot plants. I haven't tried it in fluval, but with fluval being like more moist than sphagnum moss, I feel like sphagnum moss allows for more airflow. So when I'm dealing with root rot, I just like to use moss. I just feel like I've had the best experience with rot using moss to reroot. <laughs> Perlite works, I mean, other substrates can work, but I prefer moss when I'm dealing with rot. I just feel like the humid environment and these little cups, like look at all that condensation. And then just like being in this warm cabinet where it's bright, the temperature is high, it's humid in here. Just like this will get your plants to root in some time. This heals root rot. <laughs> Pretty much what else is in my cabinet? You guys can't see the top shelf. I have like a, my big clarinervium oh, right up here and I have four thickly poles and then I have my queen. I have two anthurium. All of my anthurium are in major need of a repot. So bad. I'm gonna do that this week. Repot Pretty much, I think I'll make it a goal this week to repot all of my anthurium. I may not foam them all, but I'm going to repot them all. I already uh, repotted my big one. I didn't film it. The one over here, this one, it's working on a new leaf. Do you see right here? It's going to be huge because this one was the huge big leaf. I don't know if you can see. And it has... So the, the inflow that I pollinated died, but I pollinated another inflow and I don't remember what I crossed it with. I'm pretty sure it was my clarinervium or it was my anthurium dresser lee, which I don't know if they can cross pollinate. Hopefully it'll make it and then I will get some little babies. Moth scares me sometimes. I always, <laughs> I always feel like, um, I have thrips. <laughs> this pink princess that I chopped back, I broke the new growth on it, but it is pushing a new leaf. I gotta water that. Pretty much everything in here I think needs a water. I'll just quickly water them. And my fluval needs water. Look at this Azalani. Look at her. Isn't that beautiful? It's hard to see the pink on that. These are all three Azalani as well in here, popping. I have Azalani in here. I have Dragon's Breath, the Dragon's Scale, a couple of those. Yeah, some of the Dragon's Breath I did on 214 are just now starting to emerge, while the other half has been like popping off like, like crazy. So it just goes to show you corms grow kind of at their own pace. But you guys, these fluval roots, like look at that. I just transferred these into larger cups. One of them's working on a second leaf. Yeah, I mean, fluval is just amazing. So this is a good example. So this one is too dry and this one is still a little moist. So can you see the water level? It's like, it's pretty much moist all the way through. You can see the moisture on the plastic, but the water level is kind of, kind of low. And on this one, it's completely dry. Like there's no moisture on the plastic like this one. There's absolutely no water in here. And you can actually tell because the leaf, look how sad the leaf is looking. It's limp, so I let this one get too dry. I must have forgot to water it when I watered it the other day. So in response, this allocation might kill off this leaf because when they're underwatered, it promotes dormancy. So you don't, you never want to underwater an allocation if you can avoid it. 
So since this one is dry all the way, I'm gonna fill it up to the top and you'll see the water level start to rise. Do you see that? Now it's completely full. Yep, and so it's a little soupy on top, but it's okay. It was extremely like dehydrated. So it might kill off this leaf. Might have gotten a little angry. I feel bad I forgot that one. And so when they're filled to the top like this, I'm usually good for like four days at least, four to five days. And because they're in a warm environment in my cabinet, they dry out quicker. You could always set it up hydroponically where it has holes and it's sitting in like a cash pot with water. It'll help wick up moisture so you won't have to water as long. But yeah, don't be, don't be afraid of fluval. It honestly plants cuttings love it the ones in these trays have a drip tray you know underneath so the bottom holds water so this these ones don't dry out nearly as fast. Keep like accidentally overfilling them. Sometimes if the quorms come up, I just push them back down. I have uh, so many babies. And this one, you can see the water level is still pretty moist. You can see that root there is pretty hydrated. I can tell this one's been in here a while. Like fluval gets kind of hard over time it sort of breaks down and gets compacted. So when that happens, I tend to move them out. So I feel like that one should be, this one that has two leaves needs to get transitioned to soil soon. And you can see all the roots forming here on that one. That one definitely needs to get transferred to soil. Here's some baby silver swords. Aren't they pretty? I grew, the, I grew these from little nodes. As long as you don't let it dry out, like they'll, pretty much anything will do well in here. I even root wet sticks in here. Like here's some wet sticks I have in Fluval. I'm gonna wipe the shelf out, so I'm just taking everything out. I think I might plant this Regal Shield outside. Um, I feel like it could probably use an upsize because I already have one, you know, and there's two corms in here, so I might plant this one outside when I get a chance. This fry deck I moved to soil. Look at that one growing in doing so well. That was a fluval transfer to soil. I have another one here. I have another um, dragon scale. And then I have this oblique runner that I had in here, but again, it had caught some spider mites, you know, with everything else that was in here. So it got a little angry at me.
I'm back. So I'm almost done with my cabinet. I found I kind of need to do an emergency repot on, well, not really an emergency. I just, I'm probably going to have to repot them really soon. My Anthurium warrockwianum has been dying to get repotted forever. I found a few spider mites on it. It's yellowing some leaves and my black velvet found a few spider mites on it. So I sprayed them with Azimax through my bathroom. I don't really feel like repotting them tonight because it's getting kind of late. I think I might just finish. This is like my last plants that I have in my cabinet. They're four thickly poles. Someone wanted to know like how I water my poles. And so I need to water these. The soil is dry and the pole is dry. So I'll just show you how I water them real quick. And then I think I'll show like a few plants that some people wanted to see. And then I'll probably just end it. I think I'll just finish up watering the shelf and the side tomorrow and like top my poles off. I think, um, cause yeah, I'm getting kind of tired. I was hoping to get more done tonight, but that's okay. So I have I'll show you the four poles I have. So this is the newest one. This is a Enjoy and or Pearls and Jade. And this is my Manjula. It is loving the pole. It's climbing, I feel like, so well now. And I have my variegated Addisonii here. It's starting to get a little taller and bigger leaves. I keep the white keeps browning. Like I've lost several <laughs> leaves. The, the right side here is all white and a lot, a lot of them keep browning off. And some of the tips I cut off that were browning. But this side is very beautiful. It's just the all white leaves <laughs> are browning. And this one is my Burl Marks Fantasy. The growth is kind of on the side here. I need to like get it back in the front. So normally with thickly poles, sometimes I water the soil separately if it needs it, but most of the time I'll just water the moss, just like my normal poles, twice a week. One week I'll like drench them so that they're, um, the soil gets saturated. And then midweek I'll kind of just top them off with a bottle like this and I just kind of squeeze it. I kind of tilt it on the side like this so that it's not getting into the soil, but I'll just kind of squeeze it so everything is saturated. Um, but And that's why it's important to have a chunky mix so that if you do accidentally water the soil too much, it'll drain straight through and not cause rot. And sometimes, like, if you let the moss get too dry, which happens all the time for me, it's very crunchy. When it's hydrophobic, it has a harder time moistening unless you like let something slowly drip on top of it to moisten it. So that's the only thing. I just, I feel like I want to get into a better habit of watering my poles. I know I do it twice a week. I feel like I wouldn't mind coming in like doing every other day where I'm just like continually topping it off so that it never completely dries out. I don't think I can get on that watering habit though because I have, I don't know, it's a lot of work to keep up with however many poles I have and they, they just go dry. It happens. So since everything's completely dry, I, I start out kind of watering, moistening the pole a little bit because it's hydrophobic since it's completely dry. Sometimes I'll do that and like get to all the rest of them and then I'll come back and usually it kind of moistens a bit and then I can take like a like a normal watering can and then I can soak it better. But I would only do this if I'm watering thoroughly because if I don't want to get the soil wet then I just try to like tip it on the side so I'm like I try not to get it in the soil, but it still gets in the soil sometimes. But since I'm watering the soil with these poles, I will, I make sure to like water, I make sure the soil gets hydrated if it needs it. I 
I just want to make sure that water can drip out the bottom. And just remember with wet moss, it's going to continue to drip. And so it may drip for a little bit longer. So if you have this sitting in like a cash pot, just make sure that you can empty the excess water out. And all these plants are in my mix, except for this one, because I did this one a while ago. This is still in soles. So I'll definitely have to um, redo that one at some point. I think I'll have to extend it soon, actually, because it's at the top. So when I go to do that, I'll just change the soil. But everything else looks to be my mix, because I did that one recently. And that one wasn't too long ago, I feel like. I was trying to mix the soils there for a while to try and like combine it with my mix, but yeah, I'm still not liking it. That might have some, some of soles in a couple of these because I see the cocoa core pieces. I don't know. It's just staying too moist, so I'll, I'll probably eventually have to repot all those. I just didn't know it held on to moisture for as long as it did. Just is crazy. That is, that is not something you want for moss bowl plants. They can the soil cannot be sitting wet for two weeks uh, at all. So that one's done. The pole is watered. The soil has been hydrated, and then I usually just since these go in my key cabinet on the top shelf. There's not like a a tray or anything underneath, just the wire shelf I sit these on. So they may continue to drip. So usually I'll just like sit them somewhere to let them like drip a little bit more and then I'll put them back in my cabinet. And that's the thing with like, it's so hard to tell if this soil, like it feels dry to touch, but then you don't know. Cause like around the roots, hugging the roots, you don't know if that soil is wet. It's very frustrating. I keep telling myself it's like lesson learned, you know. All I can do now is just make sure all of my plants are in my mix and yeah, <laughs> I won't have a problem anymore. I'm wondering if that's why this one's browning a lot because it's retaining too much moisture at the roots. Cause usually if I'm getting, browning happens on white parts. I mean, there's, there's not really a way around that unless you're meeting all the conditions. And even then, like you're gonna get browning. But I'm wondering if it's because of the soil, the substrate. So I don't want to moisten the soil too much with this down here. So I'm just going to try and keep the moss moistened. And sometimes it doesn't saturate all the way through since it's hydrophobic. So I'll try and like squeeze my bottle in here and like squirt more water in the individual little holes in the back. Yeah, sometimes you just have to be careful depending on the soil that you use. Because you just don't know. I'm going to come back to that one because that one didn't get saturated all the way. Next up is this one. Yeah, it's pretty much the same process. I just moisten the moss and if the soil is dry, I just make sure that it's getting moisture and that it's been watered at least once a week. But these little bottles come in handy. I definitely recommend this if you're going to be doing pulls or like thickly pulls. I just feel like it's so useful. You see it moistening? I don't know if you'll be able to tell with the glare. Whoops. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not watering the soil on this one because I watered a pretty good amount through the pool. If I see it dripping out the bottom, then I've watered enough. I can tell this one is definitely soles. Yeah, this is all soles. This one's like more hydrophobic too. Yeah, I just kind of watch the water level and see where it drips to. But for example, since, you know, like the Enjoy was completely my mix, I know when my mix dries, like this soil was completely dry. But for this soil, I don't know if it's dry. Okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna water the soil at all. Whatever will drip from the moss will drip into it. Okay, it started to hydrate a little bit, so let me add a little bit more. That's all I'm gonna do for this one. I don't wanna overdo it. So yeah, that's how I water them. And I have a lot of thick weed poles, so I'll get to the rest of them back here tomorrow. This entire shelf pretty much is thick weed poles. So I'll take you around and show you a couple plants that um, some of you guys wanted to see real quick. And yeah, we will end this video and I'm gonna to go to bed and get some sleep. All right, someone wanted to see my epi marble so it is here and it's growing in nicely i feel like it's growing a lot faster now that it you know is pushing growth the original leaf is definitely going you can see it's browning it's yellowing a bit more i am going to get this on a pole i'm going to do a thick leaf pole i'll probably just do the small size like that one down there the three and it does have, you know, two nodes growing. It actually has a third node growing. So it has this one here. It has one here that's just starting. You see that one down there? And then it has this one. So I actually have three nodes, which is kind of cool. And, you know, it's still in the original mix. I haven't repotted or done anything to it. I added some fertilizer and I'll water that probably tomorrow. But yeah, I'll probably get it on a pole sooner than later just because I am starting to get growth. My Florida Beauties here, the other one is in the other room, the one that reverted, but this is the one that I recently did. Um, I'll water that moss tomorrow. It hasn't pushed a new leaf yet. And I'll probably end up like maybe securing the vines a little bit closer so that it's not you know, so spread out. I think I might do that when I water it tomorrow. Here's my oblique. Someone wanted to see this one. It's growing well. It's actually giving me a runner. I noticed that the other day. It's probably because I'm keeping the moss too dry. Or I might have to chop it off. Like right here. This plant is notorious for, for doing runners, but it's, it's growing in nicely. My Baltic Blue is here. Again, this was in... Uh, a mix, you know, the other mix. So I had to take this one out and it hasn't really grown much since doing that. This was all like propagated cuttings. This is the, this is all that I have of the Baltic Blue. I honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this plant. I have Epipronum plants that I like much better than this one, like my Panatum Albo, my Cebu Blue. And now I have the Epi Marble. So the all green one, I'm not really a fan of. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna keep this. My variegated micans is down here. And I had to cut a growth off of this one cause it grew in wonky. That leaf is pretty cool. So this one I had cut and then this one I had cut cause it was growing weird. You can see where I cut right there. So that one, it hasn't grown like a new node yet but this one's starting to push. 
a leaf. I mean, it's it's okay. Like the halo micans is probably one of these plants I would do on a thinner pole. Like this one's probably too big for it since it is such a thin plant. So I don't know. I might let it grow a little bit more, but I actually might cut this one back so that I can have like multiple vines growing instead of two strands. So I might do that. I might be starting over kind of with this one, but we'll see. My syndapsis props are all down here and they're doing well. I don't want to like reveal the winner or anything like that, but they're, they're definitely rooted. You guys, I need to film, like, look at that. Look at those fluostratum roots. It's crazy. I definitely need to pot these up and do that one day. Probably not this coming week. Um, maybe the week after I will get working on that. Ooh, that's nice. This was the other one, you know, like I said, that was rotting, but it's, it seems to have adjusted okay without having to reroot it again. So, that is so beautiful. I recently extended my heart leaf too. I added an extension on the variegated one. It is so beautiful. Thank you guys so much for watching and being here. I really hope you enjoyed this watering vlog. I can't wait to do another one. This was honestly so relaxing and therapeutic for me. And yeah, stay tuned for a lot more repotting, plant chores, you name it. There is so much plant care to do. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much and I will talk to you later.